Hello and welcome to lecture number six on transition coverage. This is one of the most useful features of functional coverage language. Uh, note that not, transaction level transitions are very important to cover. For example, did CPU issue a read followed by a write invalid? Or did you issue a decache miss followed by a decache hit cycle? Such transitions are where the bugs occur. And we want to make sure that we have indeed exercised such transitions. So let's dive deep into the syntax and semantics of the transition coverage. Let's look at this example. Here I have two uh, variables, ADR1 and ADR2. I have declared a cover group called GC, whose sampling point is at pause edge of clock. Inside the cover group, I have two cover points, cover point for ADR1 variable and cover point for ADR2 uh, variable. Now inside this uh, cover points, like we, not, like we always have, I have declared bins, but these bins are to cover transition uh, coverage. So for example, bins AR1 states that if the value of ADR1 is 8 hex 0, 0 at this clock, at this pause edge of clock, because pause edge of clock is a sampling edge, if the value of ADR1 is 8 hex 0, 0 at this pause edge of clock, that the next pause edge of clock, it should be 8 hex FF. So basically, you have to make sure that your test bench creates a test that produces this transition. And thereby, we make sure that, for example, if you're writing to, uh, if you're reading from a cache line, that the very next cycle should be, uh, for example, write invalid. So this is just a very simple example of how you, you can declare a bins for transition. Similarly, here's the other uh, cover point, ADR2. It states that ADR2, this variable here, should go from 1 to 0 on successive uh, clock edges. Now here what I've done is, uh, this is something interesting. I've done a cross of these two cover points, cover point AC and cover point DC. Each of these cover points, as we just discussed, have transition coverage in it. So how is this going to work? The way this cross of transition will work is, you look at the very first value of each of the transition coverage point in each of the cover point, which is 8 hex 0, 0 and 1 tick B1. That means at this passage of clock, if address 1 is 8 hex 0, 0 and address 2 is 1 tick B1, that the next clock, we should have address 1 going to 8 hex FF and address 2 going to 0, which is what is explained here. So this is an interesting way of crossing even the transitions. Okay, let's look at some more uh, semantics of uh, what kind of transitions can you uh, specify. Here again, there is a variable called ADR1, 8-bit wide, and I have a cover group GC at pause edge of clock. Inside this uh, cover point for this ADR1, I have four different bins that I have uh, declared. The first bin says that ADR1, this particular address 1 variable, should go from 1 to 2 to 3 at successive pause edge of uh, clocks. And obviously, you can have as many transitions as you like in this kind of a sequence. The second one uh, is a bins, and again, as I have uh, said before, these two brackets mean create as many bins required as you see on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we see 1, 2 and the next clock 3, 4. What this means is the transition, there are four transitions that need to uh, take place and each of those four transitions will be covered in a uh, automatically generated bin. So the four transitions are 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2, 2, 3 and 2, 2, 4. Quite intuitive. So what we are basically saying is that your test bench should exercise the design such that we see these four transitions because that's where the bugs may be and that these four transitions we must exercise and must be covered in this auto generated bins. Similarly, bins uh, ADRB5 states that 
address 1 should remain hex f, hex f for 3 consecutive clocks. Star 3 means 3 consecutive uh, transitions. That means address 1 should go from hex f, next clock hex f, and next clock hex f. And in, in a similar manner, ADRB 6 states that hex a should transition non consecutively. What that means is at a given clock edge, you may have address 1 equal to hex a. Then after a few clocks later, again it goes to hex a. And after a few clocks, it may again go to hex a. But these three non consecutive transitions must take place and nothing in between. So your test bench again is to make sure that you create a certain, for example, a cache read. And after a while, do another cache read. And after a while, do another cache read. And these three, for example, or five or ten, n number of cache reads is something you want to make sure that if you do continual non-consecutive cache reads, that you are going to be able to find a bug. And here's a simulation log, which shows all the transitions. One of the good things about uh, this particular simulator that I'm using, it clearly shows in the log the number of transitions that you have specified and it will show you the coverage of it. So one, two, three, which is the first bins, then the four transitions of the second bins, then and the consecutive uh, transitions of the third bin, and then the non-consecutive of ADRB6. And they are all covered, of course, the way I wrote the test bench. Let's look at some more examples. This example, I just want to make sure how the transition semantics actually works, syntax and semantics. So in this cover group GC, we already saw a bins where the transitions are specified as 1, 2 uh, and 3, 4. And these means 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2, 2, 3 and 2, 2, 4. But now look at this line. Here I'm saying 1 followed by 3, 1 followed by 4, 2 followed by 3 and 2 followed by 4. This bins ADRB4 is not the same as the bins ADRB3. Do not confuse, so do not specify transitions as in ADRB4 if you want to have the transitions as specified in the address B3. So how does this work? Think of this particular line as such. Put the 3 comma 1 into parenthesis, 4 comma 2 into parenthesis, and so on and so forth. If you put the parenthesis in the proper places, then you will know how the transitions of this line will look like. And here they are in the simulation log. The way the transitions will look like 1 to 3 to 4 to 3 to 4. For first one, for example. And second one, 1 to 3 to 4, to 2, to 4, and so on and so forth. So altogether, there'll be eight transitions. So again, to make sure that if these two lines, uh, the, the type of transitions that you should expect are totally different, and they are not the same, even though the first glance shows you that they are the, the same. Okay, let's go back to our PCI uh, commands uh, example that I have been carrying forward uh, among different uh, features. Again, there is the enum for the PCI commands. There are 12 different types of uh, PCI commands. And in the cover group, what we have done earlier is I, we created bins for PCI reads, bins for PCI writes, and bins for PCI miscellaneous. What that means again is that in this bins, create as many bins as required and cover IO read, mem read, conf read, mem read multiple and mem read line. So basically make sure that when all the reads, all the read commands of PCI have been exercised, that all these bins should be considered covered. Similarly for write and similar, or similarly for the miscellaneous uh, cycles. But now that is fine. But in all honesty, when you are doing uh, functional coverage, when you're testing your DUT, is the transitions where things can go wrong. For example, 
you go from iori to iorite or you go from iori to memrite or you go from memory to iorite these transitions is where you may have bugs and we have to make sure that we have your test bench have exercised each of these transition so that's what we are doing here so i'm creating two more bins bins read to write and bins write to read and here what i'm doing is i'm specifying all the read cycles followed by all the write cycles and just like what you saw in the previous uh, slide what this is going to do is is going to make sure that you have covered for example io read to io write io read to mem write io read to conf write io read to mem write invalid and then it will continue on with mem read to io write mem read to mem write mem read to conf write and mem read to mem write invalid and so on and so forth only when all these transitions have been exercised by your test bench that these bins R to W will be considered covered. And, and again, as I said uh, earlier, that when your bug rate starts dropping, when you're not finding new bugs, is when you go back and look at your uh, coverage report, and, and you may notice that a lot of different types of transitions have not been exercised. So transition, in my mind, is one of the most useful feature of functional coverage language. That's all folks. Uh, this is a brief introduction to the transition coverage. Uh, thanks for your time uh, in attending the lecture and I will see you soon in the next lecture.